And what can rank-and-file Americans do to help protect our freedom and democracy? I think, first and foremost, Americans need to be paying attention. As I mentioned earlier, it's it's very, very important that we not take our democracy for granted, um, that we pay attention to what's going on, uh, and that we hold our leaders accountable. Um, We... uh, the, the book focuses a lot on this sort of spiraling erosion of democratic norms when leaders sort of go to ever higher, ever greater heights to, to use institutions as weapons against their rivals. And there is a, a tendency sometimes for um, particularly partisans of each party to, uh, to support fighting back. Um, and we're very concerned, for example, that I, I personally think that the, the failure of the Senate, the denial of the, of the Senate of, of uh, the President Obama's right to fill a Supreme Court vacancy was a horrendous violation of democratic norms. There's now talk among Democrats of doing something similar should the Democratic Party um, win control of the Senate. I think that would be a terrible idea because it would push us further down this road of norm erosion. It's important that voters hold their um, that hold their candidates accountable, that they not uh, support candidates who are making ever ever uh, more irresponsible or reckless promises in terms of how they're going to go and behave in Washington. That's something that voters can do. And when necessary, voters need to, to, to be citizens. Protest is, uh, is a healthy and important part of the democratic process, and there comes a time uh, when voters need to take to the streets as well.